B. Taylor is an accomplished Navy veteran, multi-award winning, number one chart-topping, Sony artist, producer, songwriter, best-selling author, speaker, humanitarian, and a Goodwill Global Ambassador advocate for the entertainment for the US military veterans, first responders, and their family. That's quite a big list of stuff that you do, but <laughs> congratulations, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you, Toby. Thank you guys for having me over in the UK, man. I appreciate you having me in an interview. Well, we appreciate you for agreeing to come on the show. Yeah. So first of all, how would you describe the style of the music you make? Um, probably like, a, like I work with everyone, but I'm like a, you know, I was discovered by the Motown legends, you know, uh, mm. all the miracles that, you know, that's the Stevie Wonders, the Michael Jackson, the Motown. Um, so um, I, I'm an mm. R&B hip hop, but it's more of a style. Like I like a lot of the music that I make is, you know, um, Drake, Bruno Mars type of flow writer. It, you know, it's yeah. like that type of lane. So. Absolutely. Yeah. And lyrically, do you have any particular themes that you like to write about a lot? Yeah, so I like, like I'm uplifting, um, you know, about trying to write about like, you know, whether it's if it's in a club type of setting, you know, it's about mm -hmm. feeling good, having a good time, you know, ladies having a good time, guys having a good time, just mm -hmm. more upbeat stuff, more um, to uplift people and then writing about issues that's going on in the world and, you know, how I can better make a difference. So most of my music is real upbeat. You know, and if it is slower, real uh, moving music that has a message, has a mm, message. Absolutely. And being an award winner, what does that feel like? Do you feel particularly proud? Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> I, I really, I do, man. You know, I've been blessed to win some um, great awards, uh, uh, mm. uh, work with some great people, you know, Polly Perrette from NCIS, Chris Brown, Ray J. Wow. So, you know, flow, like I've been able blessed flow rider, you know, mm. work with some great people and continue to grow and I've had some great awards. But the biggest thing is that I'm able to represent my brothers and sisters from the United States military and our veterans, mm. first responders and their families and entertainment and just be an advocate in the best way that I know how, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So how did you first start to get interested in making all this music originally then? You know, I was a, I served, I was a former athlete, went to college, yeah. studied engineering, played football and basketball, you know, played music in church. Parent, my dad's a reverend, my mom sings, so I grew up as a past preacher's kid in church and um, yeah. learned how to play all the instruments and eventually played um, going through college and, you know, I was on my way finishing school and going to professional football and I played, you know, I joined the Navy and, and served during war and, you know, my first time out in California, I ended up meeting Snoops. Uh, wow brother and Snoop and they asked me they heard me playing the music and, and they asked me to play at their mom's wedding and birthday and Snoop's like my big brother him and his brother oh. big and that I took yeah. that back to the military and the military's wait a minute you're leaving to go play in the football how'd you meet <laughs> Snoop and they changed met Snoop and then D12 and Eminem and mm. then eventually everyone else in the Motown Legends and next thing you know I'm using my music skills from that I learned growing up in church. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the church is a great place to learn the music overall, isn't it? Yes, Toby, it is. It really is, yeah. man. It was a great place to learn all the different instruments. My mom, I didn't like going to choirs all the time, but my mom was like, it's going to pay off sometime. You're going to play some music and someone's going to hear it. And yeah. Snoop's brother and Snoop heard it and his mother, Snoop's mom, Beverly, which is like my second mom, um, you know, they heard me and gave me a chance. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, being a Navy veteran, how has that shaped your lyrics and your music? Has it at all? Yeah, man. You know, I've had some great managers in the military. You know, the Navy yeah. was a great part of my life that, you know, I had accomplished a lot. But, you know, the military, mm -hmm. I really grew up and, you know, had to understand what strategy was about, how to get things done, how to, mm. you know, I was a sports guy and, you know, on a team you play together and win as a champion, you know, together. But when you're in the military, it's, it's the biggest commodity ever. There's no yeah. excuses. You have to get it done. Like I said, oh, you yeah. learn strategy, you learn the attention to detail, you learn how to carry yourself, you learn not to leave nobody, anyone behind you, either follow, oh, yeah. leave, follow, or get out the way. So it's this, 
it's uh it showed me a lot serving at a time when the war was heightened you know in oh, the yeah. 2000s you know uh, middle 2000s and so i was in you know and so i learned a lot had a lot of great mentors in high key positions mm -hmm. from you know secretary of navy office to generals and admirals and kept with those mentors that helped to shape my career along mm -hmm. with what i was taught by my father and my mom and as well as other Motown icons that were around me and prestigious people. But the military, it just gave me the 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 last piece of grit and tool that I needed to never give up and always, you know, press forward. And I'm so mm -hmm. thankful for our US Navy and our entire military, and especially when the SOCOM guy, special operations, you know, that I yeah. did my training with for sports and stuff that really got me mentally prepared for entertainment in the real world to tackle anything so yeah. that's how i never give up so to the military and to our veterans you know i'm always uh be a voice as long as i'm breathing man you know? yeah and that's quite interesting because two different kind of jobs music and being in the navy yeah. sound so different but right. they have a lot more in common than we think because of the simple skills that you learn are transferable across everything Yep, to exactly, Toby, and that's what I was able to do, blend the worlds of the DOD and military with sports and entertainment, you know, which mm. is unique, and I attribute it to the great team, you know, led by Sam or Lisa, you know, been with me from day one and my entire management and One Life organization team, you know, those two guys, Sam, they've been at the beginning, you know, and you have to have a good team that understands what you're doing because I was like a hybrid, Toby. You yeah. know, it was it wasn't a blueprint for being an entertainer and a producer, songwriter, artist, and then being an advocate and working with the DOD and the military background. So these mm. were two separate ways. And then you throw the Motown legacy and the Motown way in there. Mm. You know, you're blending all of this that's never been blended together. So it was a hybrid. So I attribute that having a great team of people around. You're only as good as your team. You yeah. know, I had a great team that believed in it, understood it, dealt at a high level, and we were able to strategically leverage all these things and keep building, whether the naysayers were saying whatever, we kept accomplishing, even through the yeah. pandemic, we kept accomplishing. So uh, I, I attribute that to a great team as well. So. Yeah. And I don't know how it is in America, but here, when you're in the armed forces, sometimes there's a bit of a ceremonial role as well, at yeah. big royal events and stuff. So yeah. does taking part in that also kind of helped you musically? Yeah, it did, you know, um, for sure. Like in the mm. military, you know, I used, I, I performed with the Naval Orchestra, Naval Band, which is some of the greatest musicians in the world. You know, like mm. they are like Juilliard, you know, Berkeley's, <laughs> you know, can play anything. And that helped, you know, when I perform with them and just to see that, you know, um, how they do it. Plus, they're not just musicians, they're military type musicians. So when you're yeah. talking about Marine Corps drumline, you're talking about mm -hmm. discipline. <laughs> like not just, they're just musicians out playing like a regular college band or, you know, band or whatever. These are disciplined guys that are soldiers Oh, yeah. that play instruments that have a detail and are ready to fight, you know, yeah. so it's a different discipline. Mm. So they're great musicians and, you know, being able to be a part and, 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 and working with them throughout my career and, and having that blessings from the, the, the Pentagon and the chief of information and secretary of the Navy office. It, it's been a blessing yeah. for my life. Yeah. yeah. Those people have got to get it exactly right when they perform exactly. live. Otherwise exactly. it's embarrassing. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And they probably get executed here. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be talking to that uh, the leading commanding officer. <laughs> That's a different thing. You don't want to deal with him or her. You know. Yeah. Now, tell me just a little bit about your uh, non-profit charity that helps people in the military. Then. Yeah. So I created One Life Organization in 2016, and it was basically more focused on. Um, doing a uh, partnering with sports and entertainment organizations to have a VIP experience for our troops and veterans and uh, first responders and their families to integrate with the stars and the celebrities and the ball players and the organizational leadership of these places. And that was part of one of the programs. And then the other one is I was helping with um, what the veteran or military need, like getting them a home, furniture, different things. And it kind of turned into the wellness aspect because I'm big on wellness. And you know I don't you know smoke, drink, do any of that stuff. So I'm big on wellness, and so 
um, that kind of came when this cover act was passed by Congressman Bill Arrakis, who brought me into the task force. He was a senior leader of the VA Congressional Committee. He's been very supportive, and he mm -hmm. created a bill with the wellness aspects that we can choose how we want to heal through alternative therapies, whether it's music, art, sports, you know, yoga, you know, mm -hmm. alternative medicine, different things. And so they, he put a prototype together to build this uh, wellness center that's like a one-stop shop for military veterans first responders. And so last year we solidified a partnership with Horizon Hospital down in Houston to build the first prototype. So it's this whole music therapy, art, yoga, sports, a gym, fitness counselor, career counselor for your job placement, your GI bill for education, you know, your VA home loan, just a whole one-stop for military veterans and first responders. And we're orchestrating that now um, and building that down in Houston. So, and to duplicate around the country. So that's kind of my nonprofit has two programs, a, a music therapy, uh, a three pro, a music therapy, uh, where I record veterans and the album to release the music. The Heroes Experience are partnerships with the different uh, sports and entertainment companies that we do a VIP Heroes Day for our troops. And then now the wellness, the One Life Wellness Center. So that's what yeah. I do around the One Life organization. Yeah. Umbrella. And it's very important to support our veterans because they gave up their lives. Some of them aren't here anymore because of that. And yet yeah. it seems that they've been forgotten about, which is completely the other way around of how it should be. Right, right. So it's it's cool, man. And like I yeah. said, man, UK, you are a great allies. I got some great friends mm. that served in the UK um, as well, uh, forces as well. And so we have American troops, as you know, over there in the UK and stationed in Europe over there. So um, no, you're right, man. And um, yeah. that's my goal and my job. You know, I felt I was put on this earth to use my platforms for the greater good for our nation's heroes and their families. And that's what I continue to do. So. Yeah. And you're also starting an epic historical Mandroli Nelson Mandela EV project as well. So what exactly is that? Well, man, I got the call from the Mandela family, Tammy Mace Amase, who is wow. the founder of the Mandroli car and her cousin, Deleka Mandela, the oldest granddaughter of Nelson Mandela. Um, they had the rights um, uh, for their grandfather's car with the Mandela Foundation. And they had the premier governor of South C uh, Cape and South Africa. And she called me and I was going to do a music program with the One Life. And then they knew my background of what I was doing, as well as my schooling background as engineering. Yeah. So they called me to be a part of this car to be the first Nelson Mandela electric vehicle. And, uh, you know, we signed a deal. The press just came out. We ended up getting a call from the chairman and, um, president of Eco6 and the African Central Diaspora, the African Diaspora Central Bank, um, who was a very well-respected financial minister of finance a guy, Timothy, the Honorable Chief Timothy McPherson. He said, we want to be a part of this. And so we've done the largest um, deal for EV in the first round space and, and pretty much the largest deal for any African-American or black males or females. We closed a $9 billion financial deal. And uh, we're bringing this car to the world. Every car is going to have a signature. We're doing 10 supercars um, mm -hmm. that are going to be and then a luxury sedan. And each car is the Mandroli is named after Nelson Mandela's last name, the Mandela, M-A-N-D, and then his middle name, Roli Shasha, Roli. That's mm -hmm. where the whole Mandroli comes from. And each car is going to have a signature on it and it'll be the first thing ever with the Nelson Mandela signature and for what he stands for. So I'm, mm. that just kind of capped off my career, Toby, you know, to do something yeah. that's large and the mm. scale of the financials, you know, only a handful of people in this planet, you know, get to do a $9 billion deal, you know, <laughs> with, and with the Nelson Mandela's name, oh, yeah. you know, uh, so uh, we're excited and we're getting ready to roll this out with our partners and and I'm just proud to be a co-founder and head of the Mandrilli USA and get to use my demographics of sports and entertainment and, mm. and military uh, and veterans demographics to market this and also use my schooling as an engineer. So got a pretty busy schedule, but uh, it's a way to cap your life off, man. And I, yeah. I tell the kids and everyone out there, just, you know, have faith, believe in the good Lord and keep going and just believe in yourself. And that's what I did. And uh get rewarded so big shout outs to mandroli to yeah. tammy Lasse, deleka mandela the mandela family the mandela foundation and, and the premier and the cape and also a big shout out to uh, honorable uh, timothy mcpherson the chairman of the um, african central 
Diaspora Central Bank and their board for this opportunity. So we're going to yeah. uh, keep it going and then bring the world uh, the next couple of years a, a, a signature car of one of the greatest figures that ever walked the planet, Mr. Yeah. Donald Nelson Mandela, man. Yeah, that's an incredible opportunity. Yes, and sir. I've just been looking at the map behind you and I'm wondering what the different colours on the countries mean. Is that wealth or COVID cases? Yeah. What's no. going on? <laughs> You know, this is like my office area, and I got to but I just, I like the color, right? Because it was uh. man, and so I guess some of it is, like, they just made the colors, man, and oh. I, I got it going on. So no COVID cases, no. Mm. I wasn't tracking the COVID. That's not military <laughs> COVID cases. That just yeah. came like that. <laughs> yeah, because I was thinking, what's really bad in China, but really good in Australia, and kind of medium <laughs> right. in the U.S.? And- Right. Democracy? I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. So now yeah. that's just scenery. That's just the color of the map. No uh, different yeah. COVID tracking or anything. <laughs> no, it's <laughs> interesting. Thank well, you. where are we able to check out all your music if we'd like to have a little flick? Well, not a little flick, but uh, a little listen to it. Yeah, you can go to you can Google me at b dot taylor b taylor dot um, on Google b taylor dot com or you can go to at b taylor official or at I mean, I'm sorry at b taylor ambassador for IG and then for my Instagram or for my Facebook and Twitter b taylor official or you can just Google my name and you can find music and um, about that or go to b taylor dot com or mandroli dot com you can it all ties together with my organizations in one life and. Uh, to listen to music, just B Taylor, type in B Taylor and then stuff come up. Great. Well, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. It's been thank great you. having you on. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Toby.